Tónista, I want to know what your government knows about Quilch's plan to sell off vast tracts of rural Ireland to a British investment fund and when you first knew about it. Last November, the government announced 1.3 billion in new forestry supports. I welcomed the announced and thought it was a good news story for farmers who would be encouraged to diversify and begin planting trees in greater numbers. Conveniently, the government forgot to mention that large swathes of this much needed state investment would be diverted from farmers and rural communities to international investment funds. Earlier this month, Quilta announced it had done a deal with British investment fund Gresham House. The Irish Strategic Forestry Fund will acquire tens of thousands of acres of forestry ground using a 200 million euro war trust, most of which is coming from the investment fund. As part of the deal, Quilta does all the work and private investors reap all of the rewards. Quilta sourced tens of thousands of acres in rural Ireland for the fund. It will plant the trees and manage the forests. Meanwhile, of course, the fund will be entitled to grant and premium revenues of up to 60 million from the government's 1.3 billion forestry supports. And this will be just the start. Similar partnerships with other funds are surely already on the cards. The news of this scheme has sent shockwaves around rural Ireland. There are fears that land prices are going to shoot up as a result of this land grab by private investments. And those fears are well placed. We've seen what happened with housing costs when vulture funds entered that market. Why should the impact on agricultural land be any different? Environmental groups are also deeply concerned. The Irish Wildlife Trust has labelled this a scandal. It will be devastating for our biodiversity. Yesterday, the Taoiseach tried to distance the government from this grubby deal. He said it was not signed off by Cabinet and there was no memo to Cabinet at any point. There may have been no memo, Tónista, but that does not mean that there was no awareness at Cabinet that this was happening. According to reporting by the Mail on Sunday, Minister Pippa Hackett knew about plans for Quilter to use public private partnerships to acquire land back as far as March 2021, nearly two years ago. Last week, after public outrage boiled over about this deal, you said it should be reviewed and alternatives should be explored. What did you mean by that? So, Tonisha, can you clarify, when did the government find out about this deal? Why has the Agriculture Minister, who is meeting with Quilcher today, only developed an interest in it in the last week? Why were alternatives not explored before this deal was entered into? And finally, if the agreement is going to be reviewed, what does this mean? The is, is the government going to reverse it? First of all, I thank Deputy Kearns for raising um, what is a very important um, issue. And Minister McConnell Logan and Minister Pippa Hackett are meeting with Quilta today, and they will discuss Quilta's role in the Irish Strategic Forestry Fund and how Quilta will work closely also and should work closely with farmers uh, and local contractors to achieve positive outcomes for the Irish forestry sector and for the Irish farm families. They will also discuss other models, and I think other models need to be pursued. Uh, to help Quilton meet its overall target of planting 100,000 new hectares of, sorry, hectares of new forests. So it has to be seen in the context of the overall challenge, which is enormous in terms of where we're going from now and to where we want to get to in terms of, of, of forestry. Um, as you know, about two thirds of our uh, land is farmland. So in order to meet that bigger target that we set ourselves nationally, the farmers will have to be the biggest drivers of our fast forestation effort. And our farmers will also be the primary beneficiaries of the new 1.3 billion forestry programme for 2023 to 2027. It's the largest ever investment by an Irish government in tree planting. And the premiums for planting trees will be increased by between 46% and 66% and extended to 20 years for farmers. So there's very strong incentives there for farmers to become involved in this new endeavour and agenda. And new forests then on public lands will primarily be native woodlands uh, focused on biodiversity benefits because we really have to get that balance. 50% of all new forests will be broadleaf and native to, to contribute to the, the biodiversity uh, challenge and, and, and crisis. Um, and the, the Quiltus perspective on it is that we need sta state, uh, private, and also uh, in, in, in terms of... Um, the farmers as well in terms of really getting 
to a far different scale in terms of afforestation than we've experienced over the last decade. Um, and um, what Quilt are saying in respect of their partnership with the Irish Strategic Investment Fund and Gresham House uh, is that about 1% of the current government target of 450,000 acres of new forests by 2050. That's what it equates to. But uh, they're saying uh, ultimately that you're looking at about uh, 12,000 hectares of forest that the fund aims ultimately to own. Um, and that the, the, the about, um, sorry, about, and that they'll do about, sorry, about 3,500 of those hectares will be new forests. The remainder then will be the purchase of existing um, forests that the fund will concentrate on. Quilta will not sell any existing publicly owned forests to the fund, nor will any other public body sell land to the fund. Any land purchased by the fund will already be in private ownership, uh, and no private landowner will be forced to sell land um, to the fund. The strategy and, and, and the, that we've outlined is up. still before Europe in terms of state aid and so on. Per, we, we want to explore alternative models to the specific I'm model, now, please. but we're going to need an awful lot more on board to get to the targets that we set ourselves. Deputy Kearns. In one way, I suppose the only silver lining about this issue arising is that I'm glad we're finally having more of a discussion around agriculture because I think we don't have a slaunch care for agriculture. We don't have the kind of closely monitored targets like we do in housing to see where the Minister for Agriculture is at in terms of meeting targets. But exactly the same playbook is playing out in agriculture that has in those other departments and that's allowing the privatization of a public good. And in the future, we'll be having exactly the same conversations about forestry that we have today about health and housing always the private interest being protected. So you're saying, we're introducing these premiums for farmers to get. I'm saying, great, I welcome that. But now a private investment company are going to reap all of those funds that you've introduced, or a huge amount of them. And I think it's really, really good that this is actually being highlighted because we don't have as in-depth discussions about agriculture. But we've seen this play out over decades of policy now. How well the supermarkets are doing quite well, and the farmers are price takers, not price makers. Larry Goodman's doing fine, and beef farmers are struggling to make ends meet. And this is the latest example of prioritising those private interests you, over the interests of farmers. Uh, Tony, you didn't actually answer any of my questions, so I'm just going to repeat them quickly. When did the I government find out about the deal? Why is the Agriculture Minister only shown interest in it now? Why are the alternatives not explored before the deal was entered into? Thank you, and Deputy. will the government uh, review this decision and try and stop Please, it? The government doesn't run Quilta. You know, Crete is a separate, it's a semi-state yeah, with legislation underpinning it with a mandate underpinned by legislation. No, we can, no, sorry, we can change that mandate, but that is the mandate. So government doesn't run every semi-state. And if it did, there would be problems. And the first people in the house complaining about government interference in semi-states would be, guess who? Correctly too, as well, the opposition. So that's an ongoing challenge. But to your, to your basic point though, the farmers will benefit the most from the forestry program and from the increase in premium. Farmers will benefit the most. And there will be no privatisation of public land. I've made that clear in my original statement. There will be no privatisation of public land. Um, and that's the point. And in fact, I would favour more state acquisition of land for forestry. That would be, and that's the position uh, that, that, we, that the, the leaders of the government have discussed with the Minister of Agriculture. But again, we have to be careful of state aid compliance in terms of how we do all of that. Um, and, and that's the issue. Um, in terms of making sure that whatever we do, the more fundamental point, however, is we're not planting enough trees at the moment at all. We have to really exponentially grow the amount of trees and particularly native woodlands. And I want more purchase of land for native woodlands in this country. We should really embark on that program.